What is up, party people? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about a 2v2 specific guide for Wrestle Driven. As you guys know, I love my 2v2s. My favorite bracket is so much fun. And I want to talk today about specifics for 2v2 versus 3s or solo shuffle because I think I have way more information for those brackets than the others. And uh, there are so many Druids that I face that I'm like, dang, if they only knew. Uh, so I want to get this information out to you all so that you all know these things so i'm going to briefly talk about talents not going to be going crazy into these builds i'm just talking about specific utility stuff that will apply and how it differs between the comps that you play gear very slightly on gear um again this is not going to be a, so this is not going to be a full guide i do have a full guide on my channel just to put out about a week ago so if that is something you're interested in i would recommend tuning into that uh talk briefly about healing the most important part is going to be the uh, utility, okay? Knowing how to min-max your utility as a wrestler druid. Uh, finally, I'll peek, uh, talk briefly about the damage, and then I'm going to talk about the comps, okay? So I have uh, a bunch of different comps that I uh, categorize that I'll show you, and um, how you're going to play differently in each one of those compositions, okay? So to start off here, talents. Uh, talents, I want to just bring up a few different ones. So important one is going to, first important one is going to be maim. Okay, MAME is very, very important for a lot of comps that you're going to play because it's just a huge stun on a 20 second cooldown. Uh, you will very rarely find druids that are getting MAMEs on 20 second cooldown. Everyone talks about kidney shot being OP. Nobody talks about MAME. Rest of healers have kidney shot, okay? If you can use it, utilize it. Next is going to be Skull Bash. Skull Bash is, not, is a totally optional talent. Uh, typically in the quote-unquote ag uh, aggressive comps that I'm going to talk about, this is where you would probably want to use these. In the other comps, I don't really recommend it because you're never really going to get good utility out of it and you can better off get a different spells in instead. And finally, Astral Influence is going to be the other one because in more of these passive comps, you might get better use out of Astral Influence having the increased range on clone because you're going to be cloning from... You want to kind of stay out of the fight most of the time. Uh, so that's the other one there. Um, other than that, you know, the builds, like I said, you can go to a regular guide if you want all the specifics on the builds. Uh, when it comes to the uh, spec tree side, I would recommend Master Shifter always because of the mana return. Um, if you are active with your mames, which you should be, or if you're playing a passive comp, and let's say you're playing Moon Conform, when you are Star Surging Wrath or Starfire, you're getting mana back, and it's going to be help you out tremendously in the long game because obviously twos is a very slower dampened game. Uh, but I almost I don't think I've ever run out of mana in in uh, in twos. I, I literally don't think so. Also, Convoke Convoke does work with Shapeshifter. So if you're playing Convoking Cat form, you get three bites, you get three thousand mana or thirty thousand mana. Okay, keep that in mind. You most certainly do not have to play Convoke. You can s just swap these points over to here. Um, that's personally just personal preference of my own. I also um, I also do play uh, Big NS because of dampening, and I don't typically use it that often. Just side note on that. And uh, yeah, that's about that on the talents. PvP talents, it's going to be pretty much these always. I will occasionally, uh, if I can't get you set of thorns, I'll play resin. If I can't get you set of resin, I'll play high winds. Simple as that. Okay, um, and that's it for the talents. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go more so into the talents. Um, with, with some of the cops too gearing uh gearing is totally up to you i have a i have three different kind of builds that i have at the moment technically four uh but uh this build i'm playing right now is just verse heavy so just all versatility i have the, the engineering stuff and in pvp combat i'm at 42 and a half verse so this is a this is this is specifically for convoking um if you guys haven't caught on to that so this is not recommended if you're not playing aggressive convokes don't even bother just play the normal stuff all right hey this guy this guy's convoking you see wrestle druid he is. Look at that. Look at that. Nice guy. Um, anyway, coming back uh, to the gearing, uh, you could... I, my other two specs, so this is the one I typically play at higher ratings. I don't play the super heavy verse thing I do because I do want quite a bit more mastery. So this spec here is going to have um, higher mastery, higher, a uh, little bit higher haste, and then uh, more verse, but more prio on mastery. I am playing bad still because of uh, convoke but again if you don't play convoke do not play that and then finally if you want to play the normal like threes haste mastery type play style um you can so this build has a lot more haste a lot more mastery and a lot of verse so 30 20 20. this one is just be wary your versatility as it gets lower 2v2 you're way more susceptible to dying as a wrestler druid than in threes so just keep that in mind uh, so that gearing is kind of up to you what you want to do it's not, I don't think there's like one best way to do it because depending on the comp, you're probably going to be playing a little differently. And if you're playing a little differently, you might want to gear a little differently. So, um, yeah. 
Okay, next up here, healing. Uh, I don't want to go crazy onto the healing, but well, I will know just basic healing. Uh, priority is always Life Loom. That is always the first spell that you're pressing on your target because of Harmonious Blooming. Life Loom gives three stacks of your mastery, aka it's going to make your other heals heal more. Okay, typically when I'm healing, I will Life Loom first, then put Rejuve on the target, and then maybe Swarm, and then I'll, I'll worry about the extra stacks of Life Loom just so I can get the mastery going. Um, when it comes to the healing in twos, photosynthesis gets a way better value because you are you, there's only two targets to heal. So while you have life loom on yourself, your heals heal faster. Okay, so you're always going to have life loom on yourself as well as on your teammate. You know, I don't prioritize having three life looms on myself unless I am currently getting attacked or the threat of getting attacked. Uh, so I don't have to waste globals on that. Otherwise, I'm going to be just be keeping up three life loom stacks on the uh, target that is getting attacked. Um, also, the last thing to notice is rampant growth is if you rego a target uh the all targets with with life bloom will um get the hot as well okay so let's say this guy's getting attacked um i don't want to cast regrowth on him but i want to get the hot off for the extra mastery and this is the enemy mage that has a kick up i can go behind the pillar i could uh regrowth myself and it's going to also apply to him so you get the extra dot all right um also treants so treants are really helpful for uh using while in cc so if you're reversing a cc comp let's say that you know you're going to get stun trapped you could put out two trees and keep them hotted and then you get cc'd it'll be way better off because of that uh the only other cooldown really that we have is iron bark make sure you are using iron bark preemptively on big cooldowns so you know uh an acerog presses death mark a Marks 100 presses true shot aura stuff like that uh, make sure that you are just pre iron barking the situation especially with high dampening you want to prevent the damage not have to heal back from it okay um okay i think that's about on the healing that i want to go over yeah uh, and then also, you know, obviously juking is going to be really important as well, but I'm not going to go into that. Okay, here to the nitty gritty here, we got the utility. All right, first up, Cyclone. Cyclone, make sure, Cyclone is your most important ability that you can cast. Unfortunately, I don't have anything I can cast on at the moment here. Uh, but when you are cycloning, make sure, first thing first, go into your spell book, look at Cyclone, look at the, the spell cast speed. Is it 1.5 seconds? Is it 1.4? Because for just for example, if I go into this spec, it's now 1.4. If I go to this spec, it's now 1.3. So make sure you are aware of the duration of your Cyclone because you need to make sure you, there are no gaps. When you're doing repetitive clones, if you leave a gap, you can easily blow that go. Okay, you you know, otherwise that you otherwise could have won. Okay, so uh you know when you, if you don't have and if you can't easily see your cyclones i would recommend getting an so look perfect this is a main so if that was cyclone i wait for it to get under 1.5 and then i would cast okay so if you don't have that add up my add-on is called name play buffs so you can get played there i don't know there's probably other ones out there but more of the story make sure that you have something that you can see with decimals on your cast okay because you're able to see that and you can see the countdown of it okay <clears throat> Next, uh, what are you going to cyclone? So cycloning is going to depend on the composition. As I get down to my comps, if you are in one of the aggressive comps, you're going to be more, uh, sorry, um, CC heavy comps. You're going to be cycloning all the time in those comps. And honestly, in most other comps, you always want to cyclone at least twice in a row. Uh, because the duration is high enough the third clone is going to depend on if it's a dire situation like are you going to win the game it's not worth risking that gap to get a third cyclone if that makes sense because it's such a short duration uh, otherwise you are cycloning big cooldowns whether that's offensive or defensive okay if a enemy rogue pops shadow blades you want to clone that if a uh, feral pops incarnation you want to clone that uh, and the same with defensive spells. If a Feral props Bark Skin Survival Instincts, you should probably go for a clone on that because that is two big defensives. Odds are you're not going to do a lot of damage into it, so you might as well uh, clone it so that he can't get healed up. Okay, makes sense. Um, and then lastly, I want to note on is site you can you can uh, while an enemy is in Cyclone. So let's say I Cyclone this target, I can go in Cat Form and swipe the clone. Even though it's not doing damage, it will give you combo points. Keep That is very important. So, for example, a real-life situation would be, let's say I leap into this guy, I bash him, okay, the other enemy healer, I clone him, I can go in cat form, swipe, 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 okay, I go for the second clone on him, and then I go in, help my teammate, give a maim onto this, onto the kill target. 
okay so being able to give you an option to get combo points without wasting your time so like let's say you clone this guy you're not just sitting there waiting time you either throwing up hots or you're in cat form main, uh, swiping the clone okay um yeah and uh, that i guess swipe kind of goes into I'll, I'll just touch on that as well make sure that you're swiping downtime okay if there's a pet behind if there's a pet active sometimes i'll bait the pet behind a pillar i'll just swipe the pet a bunch of times Okay, get my uh, my main ready, and also you own, you want to always be swiping. Okay, swipe costs less energy than uh, shred. Specifically, it is uh, let's see, swipe is thirty five energy, shred is forty. So swipe costs less energy. You want to be swiping unless you're trying to do damage, which uh, typically outside of Heart of the Wild it's minuscule. So pretty much always swiping that to get your fastest combo points to get that main ready to go, so you have it ready whenever you need it. Um, Okay, roots or trees. Did I talk about trees yet? I did talk about trees. Roots. Um, roots are important as well. Do not forget about entangling roots, especially if you're playing one of these, uh, playing with a caster. Roots are really, really important. Honestly, it goes with anything. People forget about roots. Um, also, a nice niche thing about roots is roots do not put you in combat. Okay, so for example, um, let's say my this is my heal, my uh, DPS. I throw a bunch of hots on him. Okay, he's fully hotted up. I know he's going to be okay, but we want to get pressure on this guy. I could actually go over to this guy, root him three times. By that time, the second root ends, you're going to drop combat. I can go in uh, stealth, get a rake sun. Okay, roots do not keep you in combat. Also keep that in mind against rogues if they use that against you, which I don't think they will ever catch that, or most won't. Um, but just keep that in mind that rooting will not put you in combat. Okay, next up here, Vortex. Vortex is so awesome, okay? Um, niche use of Vortex. Obviously, the easiest use of it is going to just to be use it on the target um, and, um, yeah, stop them from moving. But there are ways you can get better use out of it. Number one, add a CC, okay? If you root a, root a, a warrior or root or cycle in a warrior or even stun the warrior and you're not going him, throw the Vortex the second, that right the second before the cc ends if they don't see the vortex they will waste a mobility uh, ability so let's say that might be a heroic leap or a charge or a, uh, a shadow step something like that um against rogue mage if i ever uh, if I, let's say i open on the rogue i will almost always immediately vortex the target and run away because rogues what do the rogues love to do if you guys play rest of druid shrink at the rake step kidney on the druid pop combust i'm sure you've all experienced that that, uh, that's super awesome script of that. So keep in mind of that. Lastly, obviously the cool uses of Vortex. You can pull through pillars, okay? This area here in this uh, circle is what you can pull from. It's going to pull to the center. It can pull from out to up to the outside of the radius or uh, the, yeah. It can pull on the out, the, the per, circumference, God damn it, <laughs> from the circumference of the circle. Okay, so um, if a hunter misses a trap, if the middle is on the trap, you could pull somebody. You can honestly kind of pull it a little bit more. So as long as part of it's on the trap, you could pull somebody into it. Uh, it. You can pull through pillars. Let's say this was a bigger pillar, like on the Grand Arena. Sometimes, like, let's say this is where... Uh, let me give a good example here. Oh, this actually be good. So let's say this is the enemy healer. This is the enemy DPS. The enemy DPS starts to run away. I could vortex right here so that this, the middle of the circle is on this side. If he runs through that part of that circle, he's going to get pulled back here. I can stun him back here. He's got a line of his healer. Okay, you can pull through pillars around corners like that. There are some other niche issues like... Dalaran sewers. Dalaran sewers has a ledge. If you vortex the bottom part, there's, there's, a, there's also a ledge on Robodrome. You could do it on that big ramp on Robodrome as well, which is pretty cool. Um, not all. I don't know if it works all the way at the top, but it definitely works on the side or on like a blade's edge ramp. Um, if you, as long as the, the center of the circle is on the where you want to pull them, so you want to pull them down. This is on the bottom. The top part of the green, that right, uh, part of the outside, is going to be where the player is. If the player rocks through that part of the the circle, it will get pulled them down. Okay, so that uh, that is cool. And then um, the last use, uh, this was kind of a cheeky one, but on um, hook, not hook point, black rook hold. The, the yeah that one where it has like those rooms and the cage in the front so in, uh, let's say i'm in the starting room and there's that big cage in front you can actually pull through it so if someone's kind of let's say let's say a monk for example right you're fighting out here the monk ports in the back room and his port is right at the cage you could actually vortex like let's say that uh, he's on the other side there you put it right in front on the outside or on the inside if where whichever way you want to pull them and you can actually pull them through the gate there so those are the niche uses of vortex 
Okay, next up here. I'm just like listing a random group here just so I can uh, use raid markers and shit. Okay, um, kiting. Okay, kiting is super important as well. Kiting is, a, I always say, it's better to avoid damage it to heal it in the first place. If you can do that, you're gonna be better off. So, a few things about kiting. Number one is cancel form. If you don't have a cancel form macro, please insert the cancel form macro. Uh, so all it is, uh, where do I have it here? Where is it? Oh, cancel. So it's just literally slash cancel form. Put it as its own bind, okay? Just for you, if people always ask me what I do for shifting, you don't have to do it this way, but I always keep them close by. So two on my keyboard is calf form, three is bear form, four is moonkin form if I have it, one is cancel form. So they're always right next to each other, okay? The reason you need to be able to have cancel form is to shift instantly, okay? You can shift um, slows faster. So if someone spam chains of icing you, you can shift them a little bit more efficiently uh, to get around the pillars instead of whatnot. And if you are playing Master Shape Shifter, uh, not Master Shifter, sorry, Tyler's Pursuit, you'll get better use out of it because you're able to shift out quicker and uh, utilize that um, speed boost, right? So if I go calf form, cancel form, bear form, now I'm running at full speed uh, for that duration. Okay, uh, the other thing with kiting, you need to get good with wild charge, especially human form wild charge. One cool little neat trick. So obviously, you know, people know about you can leap cat form in and leap in. I almost never cat form leap in unless it's like really crucial because you better, if you are in stealth, like let's say it's a leap, it's usually a leap into a stun if I'm not in stealth. If I am in stealth, do not waste it. Use that to get back to the next target or to get out of the fight. Okay, kind of like how they talk about how, how do you utilize your warrior's charges. You don't want to just charge in the beginning of the fight. You want to just mount in and you use that charge for your actual mobil mobility. Um, okay, and then secondly, I'll, I want to add on the other uses of this. So we have um, wild, human wild charge, which is probably the most important. You can instantly leap to a teammate, and it's actually faster than travel form leaping. Okay, travel form leap is pretty slow, but if you are doing human form leap, uh, you are able to move pretty quickly, as you can see there. And I made a macro with the second separate button, which is, um, nope, not that one. Uh, where is it? Be on here then. I really don't use many macros. Oh, here. Slash cancel form slash cast wild charge. And that's the button that I'll press. So, you know, I could be in bear form. Let's say I'm getting trained. Um, I know my, my partner's over there. I could be going bait him behind the pillar here. Uh, press this, swap back around. Now I'm on this pillar. Okay, that's really important to use because you will catch people off guard because you do move very quickly. The, the one cool thing here, so this is something brand new that you can do, is you can use your trees. Okay, so let's say my tree is healing here. So this is almost this was cool because this was something you used to be able to do with mushrooms back in the day. Um, I can use my tree to get pulled. So what could you use this for? Blade's Edge, right? You could tree in on the top, jump off, tree in yourself back up, uh, tree in, uh, leap back to the top. Just make sure that um, you gotta kind of be aware of if it's on the edge or not. If you do heal yourself, it should move, I believe. So do you trance move? So like, let's say, is, is it healing me? Or it's going to heal the lowest target, so it's not going to move. So it may not always move, so just be aware that if it's not in your line, and so on. Okay, last trick here is regrowth stealth. Okay, so something that you can do is if, let's say, you drop combat, but you want to make sure that you get one more heal into your... Yeah, this is your teammate, right? Um, you want to throw in one extra heal. If you are not in combat, like let's say you're, you're out of combat at the moment, if you press regrowth and right at the end of the cast, or like right before you're spamming prowl you will be able to get that regrowth off and um getting stealth at the same time okay so you regrowth spamming uh, prowl and you'll get both that they both will go off and you will not be, you'll be able to get it off that does work in pvp okay uh, so that's another really cool trick to be able to utilize Woo! you guys are getting all the secrets here sorry it's a long video next and last on this part is dealing damage okay dealing damage is pretty much useless right now uh, your damage is fucking garbage, excuse my language. Uh, the only thing you can ever do to do any damage as a Wrestle Druid is Convoke. Everything else stinks, okay? Just letting it out there. You can, you know, you can throw Moonfires up there to keep people in combat, but the damage is virtually negligible. It doesn't really do anything, okay? Um, so that's why it's more important when it comes to calf form. I almost never rip. I, they, we used to have deep focus, so rip and moonfire and rake had more of a use, but they currently don't anymore. So the only thing that really does anything is maim, um, or sorry, is convoke. And so I will typically only maim targets. 
if you have downtime, let's play your, your state you're playing a spec with moon conform. I mean, you star church does decent damage if you are playing it. That's like probably the only thing. I mean, even wrath is just not even it's it's awful for the cast time and the commitment to it. But things will be changing come 10-2, of course. So when it comes to 10-2, you're, you're most likely going to be utilizing Moon Conform a lot more because the damage is really high, okay? Because you're getting a huge buff onto Wrath. You have the modifier of your Wrath damage on Moon Conform from Shapeshifter, and then you also have Heart of the Wild, one minute Heart of the Wild that is going to be coming in. Um, with that, your things are going to change a little bit. So if you do want to practice, that's why I made this hybrid build because it has Moon Conform and Mame still. So this one is my kind of like hybrid in the middle one where I can utilize all the forms to its fullest to try to practice using that. Uh, again, not mandatory to use, but just keep that in mind. Your damage is useless outside of Convoke. If you do want to utilize Convoke, make sure that you're covering yourself, okay? There are no kicks out of the way. You have a stun. You're a CC on the healers and they can't stop you either. Make sure that you are doing it or pulling somebody behind a pillar. Vortex them behind the pillar. You can Convoke them back there. Okay. Um, okay. Finally here, let's go over the comps. So, I have a few different categories of comps here. Um, oh, that is all of them. Let me just scroll down here. Okay, so this is how I, um, I lined up all the comps here. So, first off here, you have your passive comps. These are going to be mostly the melee comps. Warrior, DK, Windwalker, Enhanced, DH. Um, Rhett can flex as two different, um, as you'll see, and is also as a CC heavy comp. So, I just want to note that. When it comes to these comps, when you're coming playing to one of these passive comps... Let's say this is my DK, and uh, let's say this is the enemy healer, okay? So if this is my DK, this is pretty much how I play with a, with, in a quote-unquote passive comp. This is what you do. This is why I'm calling it a passive comp. When do you CC, you may ask? If you get a re-stealth, you can leap over. Let's say you can leap over to the enemy, get a rake stun. You clone. What do you do after the clone? Maybe get a second clone, but otherwise, you're running back, Okay majority of the game is too long to outlast your teammates uh because that is where the strengths lie of the comp if you ever played warrior or Druid, does it go to dampening yes how often every game so uh pretty much every game is going to be heavy dampener with one of these comps you can speed up the rate of it with heavier cloning but that is going to be dependent on the other team if the other team just really can't generate pressure let's say you're reversing a shadow priest with Shadow Priest Druid against as a Warrior Druid. The Warrior's just going to be running down that Shadow Priest. You could be way more active on the cloning. That's going to be the kind of gauge. But in general, in these compositions, your job is just to keep the guy alive long enough to kill. <laughs> okay? Um, Enhance can kind of flex as well because Enhance doesn't have stuns, so you can kind of almost group that as an, uh, an aggressive comp. But... Um, and the only thing I want to note with Rhett, I will, actually I'll talk about that in the CC heavy comp. Flex, so I put these as a, diff, as a different um, kind of in between aggressive and passive. The reason I did that is you may, depending on how you want to play that comp, you may stun more or less. So, Sub Rogue for example, you do not need to do any stuns because they have so many. Um, you can if you want to coordinate with your teammates, say don't bother cheap shotting the off target, I'll just run in there and rake stun or bash, okay? But typically, you know, Sub Rogue will uh, cheap shot one target, kidney the other, and then do their go. You just clone off of one of those. Same with Feral. Feral does have a little bit less, though. That's why I wanted to put that in here. So actually, no, sorry, just to get off Rogue. As a Rogue, you're going to be way more active on your stunning because they only have kidney shot unless they're... I don't think they play Dance. Outlaw Rogues, Outlaw Rogues do sometimes play Shadow Dance. I think they always do. Um, so they will have a lot more stuns. So you will not need to stun as much. But Asa, you will probably be using, uh, utilizing your stuns a bit more. And uh, Feral, depending on, again, how you play it, I think most often you are going to be playing a little more aggressive. But again, you're not playing as aggressive as, as you would in these comps, okay? So getting stuns and getting clones. When it comes to cloning in these passive comps, it's going to be really prioritizing on those big cooldowns like we talked about earlier. Being able to cyclone the big offenses and the and the big defensive cooldowns. That's when you're going to be utilizing it. So unless unless you have like a bash like I, like I did before, so if I have bash up, I can push in, get a bash into a clone or a rake stun into a clone. Otherwise, I'm gonna. You can also you um just kind of focus on cloning this guy, the the enemy DPS on the big cooldowns, and you can even you know clone one target, then push in, clone the other. Uh, just be wary of that. Uh, you will probably get swapped to if you do have any of these stalemate like both passively healers. Okay, um, okay, so we talked about those aggressive. So these are the ones I put into aggressive. Notice they are casters, okay? So in casters, when I talk about aggressive, I'm meaning you need to maim, 
okay? Naming on cooldown. That is what I mean by aggressive. Okay, you are always in the fight because you want to allow your heal your DPS to be able to pop off. Okay, typically they're always going to go the caster. So you're gonna get more opportunity to do this. When you're playing with a warrior and you push in and you're swiping all the time, you're gonna probably get swapped to and you're probably gonna die. Okay, but if you're playing one of these comps, they can't afford to get off the Warlock, maybe with a Boomy, uh, but they can't really afford to get off the Evoker or the Ellie because one of those guys are going to crank, okay? So you're constantly in the fight, you're rake sunning one guy, bashing the other, swiping in the middle of that, getting a Vortex, pop, getting away maybe, you know, go back to the pillar, heal out your guy. Let's say you pop up heals on him. You're going to spam, live, you're going to life limb yourself. You drop combat, you're back in there. You're stunning again. What are you doing after you're stunned? You're going to maim, you're going to swipe. You're going to go to the other target. You're going to maim it. Oh, he popped a big cooldown. We're going to clone this guy. What are we going to do in the clone? We're going to go swipe, 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 swipe. Get back, get the hot top. Make sure our life limbs stay up. Going back behind the pillar. Do your thing. Keep up the hots. Okay, what are we going to do after the hots? We're going to get a restyle. We're going to get back in there. We're going to rake one. We already had the maim ready, so perfect. We're just going to maim this target. Okay, uh, we're going to go back, help out, help him out a little bit, throw some swipes in. Okay, get back out. We're going to life loom, heal up. We're going to get a reset again. Get it? Okay, that's how you play it. That was actually pretty good. That was a pretty good uh, representation. Okay. And finally here, we have CC heavy comps. So these are going to be your mage and hunter specifically. And I wanted to also put in Ellie and Rhett because you could also play like this if you are utilizing Hex and Repentance uh, to its fullest. Okay. So how you're going to typically play these comps is you're going to be constantly cloning and stunning. Constantly cloning, okay? So um, if you ever see me play with a mage, um, and now a lot of people are playing hunters, so this could be very useful for you there, is um, let's say uh, let's say the opening of the fight, I'm going to push in, let's say I play with a mage, because that's what I play with a lot, uh, arcane mage or something. So I'm going to rake one, I'm going to bash the other, I'm going to go behind the pillar, I'm going to clone this target, okay? He's doing his damage on this guy. Right before this clone ends, I'm going to clone it again. After that clone ends, I'm going to maybe throw in a swipe. When that clone ends, let's say he has a poly for it. Okay, he gets his poly off uh, right before when he polys twice. After his poly's done, I'm going to clone the DPS. So basically, you are CCing uh, <clears throat> trap using a poly DR, so a poly or a trap twice. You are cloning twice on the healer and then what do you do when you run out of cc on the healer you clone the dps you clone that dps twice what happens next the healer is now off stun dr you go back in you stun him he polys again i go do my damage whatever i'm doing he polys once at the end of the when he polys the second time i'm pushing going into position to get the clone i clone off his second poly after that i'm going back in maybe doing my damage maybe getting a stun okay my i go for another clone after that clone ends i clone the dps again Okay, what did we do after that? We go back, we stun. He polys off, I do my damage, get my swipes, get my maims going. He polys again, after the second poly, I go for a clone. Rinse and repeat. Got it? That's how it should be played. So if your DPS is not playing accordingly, uh, we love, we know marksman hunters love to not press trap because they wanna press aim shot, that's okay. How about you just, yeah, just tell them, okay? Because they don't know any better. All they know is rapid fire and aim shot. Okay, so make sure you are letting them know. Mages typically are better with their polying, uh, so be unaware of that. But utilize that with any of these comps you're playing. You can do the same thing with uh, Hex. You can do the same thing with Repens. Obviously, you won't have multiple uses of them, but you can do that same exact thing. Woo! All right. Well, that is all I got today. Almost 30 minutes of fucking stuff, but I think this is, I think this is really good information for all of you. I'm, I'm really... I'm, Sure, you all got something good out of this. Uh, but if you do have any further questions, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you guys do follow the stream. I stream every night around 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, thanks for watching. Peace out.